у правительства, да, но на столе нету. Вот это Ваша. Так, значит, то, что я буду сейчас рассказывать, на самом деле, ну, очень хотелось бы обсудить и Сережи, конечно, потому что, ну, в каком-то смысле это развитие его старой идеи о том, что интегрируемость связана с выраженностью закона дисперсии. И, ну, может быть, она встречка об его идее. Что? Почему это а его идея? Да? Ну, не знаю, я от него это слушаю. Хорошо. Ладно, надеюсь, никого не обидел. Нет, утверждение о том, что закон дисперсии является да, это я его слетал, но она на деле всего слетала раз. Это она возникает просто из анализа линейного метода одевания, из анализа. Сергей его водил из всех пользователей. Да, Просто... такие идеи не могут быть, но, но они... Ну хорошо. У нас большая статья с Шульбом есть. Да, это... Это... Вот, значит, про линейный метод сейчас поговорю. Кстати, само понятие больше не законодательство. Ну давайте нам хорошо. А, окей, So, uh, uh, I want to start with a linear problem, and uh, uh, later on to make some dressing. First of all, what is dispersion and uh, what is uh, the generacy of dispersion? It means that um, that our stack problem is multiplied by a function of one argument and another argument. That also depends on x, y, t, and so on. So it looks like uh, similarity transformation for spectral data. Similarity transformation, more generically, is uh, you have some operator and you apply uh, multiplied by another operator and by inverse power of the same operator from the other side. Something like this. So what can happen if we look for such things? We find that these commutators, in sense of uh, group, I need commutators, so similarity transformations, obey some identities. Let me explain this with this sim simple demonstration. So let me have some associative algebra. It's essential for me. And uh, two el elements at, at the moment, minus one is just notation. So there are a1, an, and some other a1 minus one, an minus one. The, all of them <coughs> commute. Uh, mutually commute and uh, then for any element B, I define such a B belongs expression. to algebra. B belongs to this algebra. So then uh, I introduce such uh, word if you want, some, some function depending on all A's, including this minus one, it was put on to that. So for B, we apply operation A1, A1 minus 1. Do this algebra includes uni? At the moment, I don't need it. Just a, a bit later. Uh, I need it, yeah. So let's consider this expression. So I have this. So I have this combination. 
and for first order here and plus cycle with respect to all one n permutation. So all other terms are uh, hidden here. Uh, so sorry. Uh, now because of commutativity of set of all these two n operators and the associativity of algebra would uh, get that as the a1 when n equal to this identical zero and for a higher number all higher combinations with n more than uh, three uh, we always have reduction to terms a1 and a3 a1 a3 a4 so uh, words consistent with that's an algebra characters. Both uh, commutative and assert as as No, algebra is not commutative. On the set of these operators, A1 and minus 1, and the commutative of the algebra. And the set associated. Associated. Yes, but not, not commutative. Not commutative. A do not commute with B in other sense, it will be sentence. Okay? Why, why, why is this set, why this set is commutative? Uh, so, and now we, uh, oh, let's assume that this algebra is with unity and it has uh, and a minus 1 is the inverse to a1 and so on. Then we got that this combination uh, for n equals 3 from here, that, that was generator in some sense here. Yeah? It is also identical 0. So we have such commutator identity valid for any A1, A2 mutually commuting and any B which is not commuted. So this means that, okay, uh, now it's clear that all higher also will be zero because. Uh, uh, so the only informative word is a word consisting of three characters. <coughs> what this means? This means that if I introduce discrete times m1, m2, m3, discrete variables like this, with some operators a and uh, okay, it's written in the wrong way. I have to write a1 to m1 m or not these differences at the moment, with these notations. So B1 is shift of the first argument, B2 shift in the second argument, and B with row indexes is uh, uh, first difference. Then the previous identity means that I have B obeys this equation. But it would be equation if this difference would be parameters. So what I have to do? I have to uh, do the following. I will consider B as operator of this direct product in some of two spaces, where uh, let A be operator in V, and A1, A2 is three operators in W, and I denote, uh, I introduce A i's that were these commuting elements here. Okay. I'll uh, define them as uh, uh, A multiplied by unity in the second uh, and uh, unit multiplying AI in the second. So AI, uh, A1, A2, A3 are mutually commuting and then commuting to A. So AI, I1 to 3 are commuting. Now I really have a question. So B introduced above solves this equation. So we shift for, for 1 and 2, multiplied by difference A1 minus A2, the same difference multiplied by 3 plus cycle is equal to 0. Or it can be written in this way if I use uh, finite differences. A1 and A2 are not commuting to this B. This is essential. Okay, this is 
In fact, the question for uh, scattering that, and I hope to write. So now we have to realize all this uh, in some way. Let's think about infinite matrices. So we have, uh, say, some matrix F with uh, mn uh, running through that all numbers. So any of this matrix I can write as uh, something close to what we write uh, when we are speaking about formal pseudo differential operators. So sum over n, fn of x, dx to the n power. Okay. So on the language of matrices, this means that I uh, here fn fn is diagonal matrices and to, uh, tn is the shift operator. Then okay, every matrix can be written in this way. Uh, fn are infinite diagonal matrices, so we we'll make this uh, take these uh, diagonals. Then it would be convenient for me to make uh, so, okay, so here it's written product. Product is, of course, this product of diagonal matrix uh, and transpose uh, diagonal the second factor and then TN. Yeah. So now I make it is for convenience shifted Fourier transforms. So I shift arguments of F. Uh, Mobile Z and Mobile Z to prime are equal to 1. Then uh, for this kernel, I have this expression in terms of uh, diagonal matrices. This as <coughs> well. And uh, uh, now let me notice that uh, zeta prime here enters as power. If I consider something decaying, or uh, matrices that are quasi diagonal, so they are different from zero from the, uh, or not very large numbers or powers of t, positive or negative. Then this uh, series is finite, or uh, actually, uh, in more generic situation, it is convergent. And then I make a uh, shift z prime from unity circle to arbitrary z in complex domain. This is very essential step. So we have z <coughs> the, uh, this parameter and here there will be z which runs through the complex domain. This vector parameter is very essential. So uh, now we have products of matrices for uh, it gives this formula for product of uh, kernels of this from products of such operators. So now, now on, I consider instead of matrices, function, maybe distributions, their parameters that uh, has this uh, composition law. Okay. On this set, I can introduce. Okay, here are examples of kernels. Unity operator is this one. Shift operator is z multiplied by uh, delta function. This delta function on comp. Yeah. And uh, so on. I can reformulate all standard operations like Hermitian conjugation of matrices here. Uh, it is given by such kernel and so on. But what is essential, as only z is introduced, I can introduce, I can introduce the derivatives in this case. Operation which was absent for matrices, of course. And uh, now I realize Z function, or Z operators B and A is function is in this space. So uh, B is function of M1, M2, M3, like it was introduced. And this parameter zeta 1, zeta 2, it, so I consider M1 and M2 as a you know, space data and then three is stuck, for example, while well, construction is symmetric. And uh, 
I impose condition that, uh, in fact, condition coming from Zahar uh, Shabbat approach that uh, lowest uh, shift in uh, okay dependence on low uh, low on the first and second times uh, is given in this way this also has a whole function approach uh, that uh, lowest times and the same uh, just shift space variables. So B depends on M1 and M2 in this way. So I have two conditions now. That B1 is, uh, was introduced in this way, and uh, it is shift with respect to first variable. B2 was introduced in this way, so it is shift in second variable. And this means that A is the same. So B2 is given, uh, I have this equality in the two field. And this condition on B, if I write it explicitly in terms of kernel, okay, it's written more or less here, for the case when uh, these A's are matrices, diagonal matrices, uh, sizes they are commuting, then this uh, equation means that uh, there is such uh, equation on the kernel, which means that we have delta function on this. Delta function of this argument. And so uh, B uh, is given uh, some small b function, uh, where z is excluded by means uh, of this delta function. So, now it happens that uh, we can introduce deeper problem. I said that there is this possibility for kernels that depends on z. I introduce new of z and z. So z1, z2, and z. By uh, a solution of this problem. What is essential for me is that uh, it is always written in this way. A fact which we know that's where that it can be conjugated in some other point and so on comes from this the, from this delta function if I solve it sorry so uh, I define mu the solution of this uh, bar problem and kernel is fixed by this condition and uh, I assume of course Linux will be built so after this uh, it is straightforward to uh, write down all equations of lux pair. Okay, what will be lux pair? I have, uh, so I impose, uh, can, I write explicitly term z1, 1 over z1, and uh, consider this product. So, okay, after that I discover this relation, this relation, where u1 and u2 are shifts of the, you the same can be done for third, shift in the third variable. And uh, if I introduce now chi by means of this transformation, so I make partially inverse Fourier transform, so I have chi of n1 and n2 and z. Then for this multiplication, it is nothing but the use equation and previous equation just give me in fact no equation for sort of difference uh, known large square for sort of difference equation it was uh, essential for me that uh, okay we have this relation in fact the same as in the commuting case but now u1 u2 and a12 do not commute it, uh, and uh, so, uh, so uh, <laughs> by derivation of this, uh, by construction, this the equations are compatible. Скажи, скобки не не означают дифференцирование. Скобки означают какие? Вот эти сдвиг добавили единичку к третьему. 
добавление единицы к третьему аргументу. Это а разность. Разность на уравнении, конечно, да. Везде стоят разности. Your little a not commute, right? Uh, small a is commute with... Uh, no, they are commute. Between each other. Between each other, but not with you. And you are not commute. Any other Any two equations. The, as you see, uh, if we sum them up, then we have identity, yeah? So any two of them can be chosen last time. It is uh, known, and in non-commutative case, it is even known. A is are constant. Yes, A is are parameters of the equation. Matrix. And, and, matrix. and, uh, and choose uh, to be diagonal. Uh, and uh, uh, what else I had to say? Yes, and U is decaying with growing of M. So u is function of m1, m2, m3, and that is decay. So I can uh, exclude these parameters a from this equation and... Uh, ah, sorry, first I have to say, this equation of uh, computability, which is one of Horn's writing of Herote uh, equation, it is the same like the classical case of the differences where it's linear or there is a missing quadratic a1. No, it's linear. It's linear. But first, it's not linear. No, this term is linear. All are functions of three discrete variables, right? Yes. All are functions of three discrete variables. So I have to add cycle with respect to one to three. To this, so there are. And what's the difference between upper and lower subscribes? Lower is the first difference. So upper minus non-shift. So u1 of m is u of m1 plus 1 n something if there is something. And u1 is u1 minus u. So some formulas are more simple in this way, some for uh, so, and uh, this equation is obviously non linearization of the original. So, I just remember that the original equation was this one, linear. Okay? So, uh, it's clear that if I look for linear li limit, uh, I can still, I must go with this one. Now, uh, I can remove these parameters from everywhere just by change of variable. So I introduce B like U minus this linear terms with respect to M. Then uh, it comes out here and comes out here. This part, uh, okay, people like how to function approach because uh, the equations are bilinear. You see this question is also bilinear. Uh, why it is not in terms of top function, but uh, it would be, of course, interesting to find all this top function, but I remember that V, O, V are operators. So I can say that I solve this system, but I have to remember about this such a simple thing. Constant term, as you understand, is irrelevant. Constant term cancel out from here on the synthetics. But uh, for this term, sorry. Okay. Now, so this uh, non commutative Charlotte equation, and uh, uh, in this sense, strictly speaking, there is nothing new. The only essential thing for me was that it is uh, possible to derive it from this mutator identities. And uh, okay, it is not my first work on this mutator identities. Uh, it proves that it. Uh, in fact, all integrable equations are related to some uh, commutator identity. In any case, I don't see other examples. Now, there, are, there is a lot of uh, 
special cases that can be derived. Rota equation is known uh, that many other equations can be is generating some integrable equations. In what way? So we have parameters A1, A2, and C. AC. The original identity was either senseless if some A's are equal, say A1 equal to A2, or uh, again senseless if some of them goes to infinity. We there's just cases where we have to look for these identities more attentively and uh, to, uh, to find uh, terms next after leading, leading term disappears, so when the leading term is equal to zero, the next term becomes leading. So, for example, let me make for some a case. Uh, Substitution for x a k. So a k is an operator or diagonal matrix, uh, as you like. Huh? And uh, if I consider limit for x going to infinity, so formally speaking, k of k going to infinity, then b k, b k was defined as. Uh, A minus X. All elements they belong to a certain associative and non commutative algebra, right? Yes. For instance, it would be matrix, whatever, island, or integral operator. In fact, I hope that they can be called uh, quantized. I have one of reasons to consider this to say truthful. So B of K was defined in this way. I consider now the limit for X going to infinity. Uh, this is the result. So the first term is uh, so I suppose that A of K is invertible. Operator and matrix. So uh, B by T K means this commutator. I can introduce some new time. Now it is continuous time uh, as commutator with A capital multiplied by inverse of AK. So, and, uh, and this is the standard rule. If we have a uh, commutator in the group sense, it is, uh, we have distinct variable. If we have commutator uh, in uh, algebra sense, then we have uh, continuous variable. So in the limit, say A3 going to infinity, when I choose K, to, uh, I make this with A3, then the original identity gives me this also identity. In fact, it's uh, possible open, to open all brackets to remember that B of K for all cases is defined in this way, and uh, your uh, derivative with respect to T3 is this one, and uh, this gives the, uh, them this really identity. Now B shift with the first argument is this one, shift in the second argument is the same as before, and derivative with the third continuous variable is this one, commutator. Okay, I don't I wouldn't repeat uh, the same dressing procedure, this is the result. So we have lux pair and the equation now W is a function which is, uh, has two discrete variables and one continuous. I can continue. Now let's consider limit for A2 going to infinity. Okay, again, I have uh, this result from the identity. Now there is an asymmetry with respect to certain indexes. And in this way, I got this lux pair and equation. Equation of this combination. Is, uh, by the way, this equation is a uh, sense uh, okay, trivial if uh, we have a commutative case. So it's just uh, if 
we publish this commute, then uh, we have the same combination here and all this console. I think every term is And finally, so uh, I send a 3 to infinity, a 2 and now a 1. In this case, I have three continuous variables, t1, t2, t3. This is again uh, lux pair can be chosen two equations from these three, and this computability condition. So this equation, and I guess this is a way. I guess this is way. Okay. Now uh, the same tricks I can make with uh, limits when say a one goes to a two. Again, I. We always have here continuous variable. So if I consider this product, I make such substitution, and uh, now x goes to zero, so j goes to y. Again, uh, here is some commutator. Possibly with this matrix B small, which is really result. Of the <coughs> Well, so in this case, there are also pretty interesting operations from my point of view. So, for example, after dressing, I guess this system minus one means shift of the first variable of minus or minus one. So we have this equation, nonlinear, bilinear again. Well, this is V, not full function, potential of the equation. So, the first uh, equation is just for finding difference. The second is very simple to this uh, And the uh, case when A2 goes to A1 gives me equation that has one discrete variable and two continuous times, T2 and T3. So, there is M1, T2, T3. And dressing procedure results in this lux pair in this very simple equation. I don't know if everybody has seen it, but please tell me. It is nonlinear. Okay, it is rather senseless if we have commutative case. Because it's, uh, it's clear that it's commutative case, it means that there is no dependence on the discrete argument is the same as uh, okay. and there, are, there is possibility to make uh, and not, so I consider cases when A goes uh, either to infinity or one to another but uh, there can be mixed versions, say a 3 to infinity and a 2 to a 1. This gives non commutative to the chain. So, from Hirota equation, in this way we got standard to the chain. Uh, in this construction, it appears non commutative to the chain. So, this lux pair. So, we have two, again two continuous times t2 and t3 and uh, one discrete m1. Okay. This equation and uh, in continuous case we choose w with respect to t2 derivative to be equal to the exponent of phi minus 1 and then we got total equation. So here this means Derivatives uh, with respect to to three. These are uh, first difference in this argument. After that, uh, of course, uh, more or less standard way follows all constructions. So, from uh, non-commutative to the chain, we can derive all. Uh, Okay, P hierarchy, say, and so on. But what was unexpected for me, maybe this is a 
things that also from here consider next uh, limit to three continuous uh, three continuous variables. We find uh, non-commutative case. Uh, Davis Thurston bridge. It was uh, always Li linear uh, dispersion less linear. No, then, no. Normal very stress on equation. From this yeah. So from non cognitive total, I don't know what uh, I haven't found this in the literature, which I never read. Right. But maybe it is uh, is it in the case of two by two method? Yes. You choose two by two and uh, uh, one of these methods is to be sigma ah, three and uh, so the now Ta, 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 hmm? Now subscribes mean derivatives, right? <laughs> uh, with the subscribe to t3 and derivatives, and this subscribe means shift. A first difference. In discrete variable. And this discrete variable I sent to zero. For me, it was always a uh, surprise why people are speaking uh, in all applications for a pure KP hierarchy, so I'm never very stirred. Uh, the, in this approach, they are the same. The third yeah, zone is just non commutative mm -hmm. case. Other equation useful in this theory. Of course, you can abstract the third zone and hierarchy. It's easy, but the problem is that it's not to find a physical application. In, 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 in KB, in KB, probably also. But in KDB, we. In a sense, you are at a norm. Okay, that's all. I'd like to make a shift of okay, not in this video. I'd like to say something about the previous talk. I say that the equation, which is you call Pavlov equation, is nothing but a front equation for boundary layer. Indeed, your equation is U T Y minus U Y Y plus U X Y. U y minus u x u y y right? First of all, this is about x x x x x x x x x plus one x x x x no x y y because uh, ah x no 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 x y x x in this is the first case x x right? Ну вот вторая производная по x. По x. Ну, здесь x и x перепутаны. Нет, именно так. Тогда надо вторая производная по x. А где по x? Где по x? А, по x. Конечно, это и есть уравнение а. Павлова. То есть, если вот это у x выкинуть... Да, то тогда, тогда это будет. Тогда это будет. Тогда правда и будет. А, ага. а это у x. Тогда он решается и теряет. Ну, конечно. Ну, ребята, это имеет смысл. Нет, он просто просто не решается, если он как сегодня. Да, да, вот это дополнительный член. Я прошу прощения. Я просто думаю, что там игры перейдут. Окей, там уже на спикер будет игры перейдут. Uh...